Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's live Q&A. Hopefully, you guys can join in. If not, I'll catch you on replay. So if you have any questions about nail art or whatever, I'm here for you. And so I thought I'd play and show you guys the drag technique. Um, and I don't mean like drag queens. I mean like dragging gel polish. <clears throat> so I use this technique when my clients come in. Maybe they're just a few minutes late and they're in a rush. I still do their nails because at the time they've allotted, if I don't do their nails and I'm just sitting there and making nothing, I'd rather still get paid to do their nails but take off something from the end. Hi Carmel, good afternoon. Or let's see, what time is that for you? Is it late at night for you? Um, anyway, so I still do their nails but maybe what I'll do is find a nail art that's a lot faster and easier and then I still get the full amount and stuff. Hi, Miss Vonda. Welcome back. So I have D&D &D is what I'm going to be using for this because I have a whole bunch of their neon colors. And uh, so I want to show you that you can use this with actually with any gel polish, but I'm going to use this one here. So neon obviously shows up the best on white as we've noticed. And so just after eight in the evening. Oh, so it's not too late for you there. Okay, put your bulk down first, fan out your bristles, push up to the cuticle area, and drag. I feel like I should just have a, a recording of that. <laughs> I feel like every time I say it, I kind of feel like I'm like an airline stewardess who's repeating the same script over and over on the airline. Like, to your left, you will see this. <laughs> to your right is this. It's funny. All right, I'll add that to soft level. And then cure. Um, Carmel, I never have enough chocolate, ever, ever, ever. So even the big amount of chocolate that you just sent, I can tell you in a little bit of a teaser, Nailkami sent me um, some more products and they loaded me with crunchies as well, which are my favorite. And I even told you that I've stuck some in the freezer and so it changes a little bit, makes them go poof when you, when you bite into them, so it's funny. But I just had a very quick lunch with my husband and um, I just had a crunchy, so I can still taste it. Those are so good, so good, absolutely love them. So again, thank you for uh, spoiling me. I don't need the minute I put plenty. <laughs> you hear me in your head, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna get these ready. So in the D&D, I'm gonna use Flamingo Pink, Lemon Juice, which is our super bright ones. Um, we'll play with some Spring Leaf, and Orange. Got a variety going on here. All right, so I'm gonna put a second coat of the white on. I do hear that a lot, Carmel, that people can hear me saying that in their head. And I guess I didn't realize that it was something so different until a lot of people are like, that was the game changer for them, was applying the gel polish and then going over it again and watching it soft level. They always had streaks and they're like, I get it now, I know what I was doing wrong. So. Hey, if that's the one step that can make your gel polish be amazing, awesome. Okay, so usually I just choose two colors for this. I'm gonna show you with two, and then we're gonna play around and do all four. But, so when I mean that by drag nails, I get my gel polish not a lot on the brush, and I'm gonna drag that through the white, and I want it to not be pretty. So go over until it drags the white through it again. Wipe your brush off on a paper towel so that you don't contaminate your gel polish from color to color. And do a yellow. I think I'll, I'm just gonna go into three colors on this one. Let's bring in that orange. This nail is long enough that I can do more. Okay. Quick and easy. Take a dotting tool or a brush. I prefer my dotting tool. Start into the white and drag that through your colors. 
whatever color you pick up at the end. So the orange is gonna deposit here and then you're just gonna keep dragging that through these colors. And then I always go back to the first one and then bring it back down. That is dragging. Very fun. And with the neon colors, it's a whole lot of fun. So I'm gonna show you a trick on this one, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and cure this one and get another one ready. Because we can make that so multicolored because we're gonna bring Sharpies in on it. All right, so I'm gonna prepare this one with a white base. I wish my clients wore their nails this long. This is like almost double what my clients wear. So anytime I get a chance to like play around, I always do longer. <laughs> Just cause. That's one coat of that DND. I love the DND. You know that one, it's a profitable polish because the cost is less. And I've showed you guys where you can find it, you know, to get them from um, like Calcet Nail Supply or Beyond Polish or something from wholesalers. It's profitable and it is very good gel polish. Okay. Um, you don't, Carmel, yeah, I feel like it's not right if I don't do it that way. <laughs> okay, so to make this even more multicolor, you can bring Sharpies in and fill it in like a coloring book. And so, scrub these are my easiest ones so there is a little bit of like a tiny bit of a tacky layer with dnd but not that much so you don't have to remove the tacky layer then you can come in and add more coloring if you want Because every time I've tried to do this with lots of color of gel polish, it just, the colors kind of mix together. And we know that like a green and a pink together make brown. And so somewhere where my colors meet, I'm going to get browns or I'm going to get a color I don't desire. And so being able to do it like this is kind of fun because the colors aren't really mixing. And you can add a little bit wherever you want. I'll leave that. Then see where you can see the marker lines. I'm going to take it and alcohol ink it. So take, I always use this old frayed out brush. You can tell it's been in alcohol and acetone a lot. Don't use your good ones. Put it in the alcohol and just really lightly tap it and it will alcohol ink those together. And this is not going to affect your underneath. So you can see where it starts to blend that. It's fun. Get that green up in there. Now I have like more of a tie dye effect. And so even though I used the gel polishes to do it, I added more using the Sharpies. Get that way up close. So fun. Okay. Oh no, I just hit it in the light. Eek. And I didn't set it right. Let me fix that again. So here's troubleshooting. So I didn't turn my light on. Today has just been that kind of day for me. So obviously I can just go over and re-smooth the gel back out. And put it in there and turn the light on. Makes a big difference, huh? Do you ever have a client that, so my light, when you touch the bottom, the light, the bulbs automatically come on. And so do you have the client that like never touched the bottom and then later on you realize it's not set at all? And that always makes me crazy. But it happens. On this one, I'm going to show you something that I was playing around earlier. I did a fall nail workshop um, and I did this design this morning on them. But we're going to do this, but I'm going to use the neons on it instead. So that's the hollow underneath it. So I'm gonna do that, and a hollow always looks best on a dark color. So I'm gonna just take the darkest um, one of the neons that I have, 
because it's pretty much going to cover it up anyways. So Vonda, you're in that workshop and we talked about spirals. I'm going to go over spirals again. You made me realize that maybe that's something that I haven't touched base on enough. And so we're going to do spirals again. Right, allow that to level out and cure. That's much better. Yeah, Carmel, that, that fall one is way cool. I have clients that are for sure going to be wearing this, without a doubt. Yeah, but we're going to do it with neon and see what it does. All right, so this one I'm going to marble the neons into it. So you put on your second coat. And when you marble, you are using your gel polish a little bit thicker because you need it to move around. And so this is my normal thickness on the white. But now we're going to come in and plop on some colors. No rhyme or reason. Make some areas bigger than the others. Remember, wipe off your brush if it's needed so you don't contaminate your gel polish. Let's bring in some of the green. And yellow. Obviously, by itself could be cool. You could drag through it. Here, we're going to play. You could drag through it side to side. That is cool. But what I wanted to show you was more of a marble. So if you're going to continue to play, you could turn it into a marble and go back and forth. The hard thing with marbling certain colors, like I mentioned earlier, is your pink and green, or orange and green, make a brown. So don't over marble, because you don't want them to really get in there together. You want to keep them separate like that, and then cure. In this case, because I have so much gel polish on there, I cure for one minute, because that's a lot of gel polish on there, and maybe the 30 seconds isn't going to be enough. Yeah. <laughs> Carmel, I'm going to help you out with spirals, too. Today is your day. I challenged Vonda, and um, in this one I'll challenge you on um, practicing. So I'm going to do my second coat of pink on here. So I want this solid, even though I'm going to be adding additive on it and other things, I think it's going to look best with a solid base. Beautiful. Allow it to settle where you can see that light for your function all smooth in there. And then cure. Alright, so this one was in for one minute, and then you would top coat that. One thing about the neons and the creams like this is this would be fun in matte finish or in gloss, and so that's fun. See those combos together. Okay, so for this next part, I'm going to use Supernova. Um, many companies are coming out with this. It's super fine hollow, like super fine hollow. If I sneeze, this would go everywhere. And so I really think that's the difference of how well they work and then what you apply it with. So a lot of people use like those, um, you know, makeup applicators. Um, I like to use my makeup wedge. See how fine that is? It goes everywhere. Okay. In the slight tacky layer, 
Go ahead and add your hollow. Ooh, that's almost like a rose hollow. Beautiful. Rainbowed. Okay. Now, if you are watching from the Fall Now workshop, I put a matte finish on that, and at the end, I liked it better with the gloss. So I'm not going to matte finish that. I'm just going to go straight into the colors and uh, and then gloss it at the end. So if you're seeing the difference, I'm going to ask. That's what I'm doing. So yeah, that is really pretty on its own. So I could have only imagined if I did a top coat on that, how glossy that would be. But so there would be like your neon pink hollow. We're going to use a little white. So yellow on that's probably going to turn an orange, but I'm going to use, so I'm going to use yellow. Orange on that would probably turn a darker pink. And remember green on that is probably going to turn a brown. So being that I use that color base, I might be a little bit limited on my colors, but white spirals on this is going to look pretty. Okay, so grab your detail brush. And earlier I was talking about I want you, so Carmel, here's your challenge, okay? I want you to try spirals using gel polish and gel paint. And then what I want you to do is what I do is I kind of mix them together. Gel paint is very thick, like very, very thick. Watch, it will even string off of my brush, okay? That's how thick it is. Gel polish is very thin. Sometimes what happens with gel polish when I do designs on it here, I'll show you. I'm going to get this gel paint off of here. If I just use gel polish and I do my spirals, it's going to be white, but it's going to be kind of sheer. It's not going to be a stark white is what I need. Okay. So then we probably have to go over that more than once. Gel paint is very highly pigmented, but sometimes it's so thick that I can't really get a good spiral on it. So I mix a little bit of gel polish with that gel paint. I can say it's worth it in the gel paints to buy a black and buy a white. Okay, then when I do a spiral, it's a solid white. And you, would, and you can see that my lines are a little bit finer because the gel polish is softer and it's gonna ooze a little bit and the gel paint is not. Oh, I don't want to mess that up too much. <laughs> Look, I took it out. All right, so I'm going to go over this. So when you do a spiral, the first place of contact is going to be your biggest. And I'm using the very tip. See, I'm using the very tip straight on. I'm not at an angle. The very tip. Spiral it till you could feel that your bristles are going to start to pop. Then kind of lift up from there. Go to the that heaviest point where you started and then re-spiral it back in. And then you can come out and continue that spiral till you feel like it's gonna pop again. So like right here, I feel like my bristles will start popping. So I'm gonna bring it up, reload, and then go back again. So it's kind of hard to find one paint to be able to continue go spiral, 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 spiral. Then you start creating what I call is the illusion that it's spiraling. So we're almost off the side of the nail. I'm going to come around. And finish that. And then I'm going to come back in like it continued to go. And go around some more. So your challenge is continue to do this on a nail till you feel that you're using just the tip of the brush, how much pressure you need and doing all of that all of the way around. And then I'm going to come in a different part. So here's that big bulk that I said will be the heaviest part. Spiral it till it feels like it's going to kind of flip up, come back in and finish that spiral. And then add to this. 
Now I do know some texts they'll start the spiral and then little by little they make their spiral like this. As you can tell it's not how I normally do. But little by little they'll go through and make that spiral. It takes time but once you get spirals you kind of feel super like advanced in the nail industry. You're like, I got that. I know how to do that. Then it's easier for you to outline designs like flowers and stuff like that. But sometimes it's the consistency of our paint. Spirals. So for fun, I'm going to add a little bit. I'm going to add more white down here. I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow into that white so I have a thicker consistency so it still stays yellow, but now it's thicker. And then I can come in and add to these spirals and kind of make them look like they're color changing. Like I said, there is a possibility that this yellow on this pink is going to turn a little orange, but it looks like it might stay pretty good. Super fun. I'm going to come in the inside of this one and change it to a little bit of yellow. And since that's looking really good, and probably because I'm mixing the gel polish with my white gel paint, is a reason why it's not changing color so much. So why not try some of the green and orange and see what we can do. So, a little bit of orange. A little bit green. And more white for the orange and more white for the green. I'm doing this so that I don't have to keep doing my cleaning my brush. All right, so being that I already have yellow on there a little bit, um, I guess it doesn't matter whichever one I go into. I'm gonna mix the green in with my white. and go into the same spirals to turn it a little green. Oh, so fun. I'm gonna change a little bit of the inside. So I had no rhyme or reason starting this. So this is just what happens when you play you start coming up with new techniques, new ways of changing things. So I just learned something on this one as well. So fun. Okay, so to properly clean your brush in between colors so it doesn't bleed, you're gonna take a base coat. You can use a top coat if you want. Work your brush into the base coat to get off the other paint and then wipe it off and you'll see that it will it cleans it really nicely. And then leave the gel on there. Let's see. I'm going to mix the orange into that white and change out some of this to bring in more orange. Yeah, I definitely know that doing this over the, the white, mixing it with the gel paint because it's more pigmented, it's not really mixing it with the background color, so that's way cool. I'm just going to change the whole spiral to be color. Very fun. Okay, so to experiment, okay, if I just did the gel polish and not mixed in with that white, it's gonna show up, but
but it's going to be more sheer. So it's not showing up as much as it is, it is over the white. So in this case, it would definitely be worth putting the white down and then not curing it and then going back over it like I did. If not, you could do the white completely, cure it, then come in with your gel polish and go in and cover it up that way. Here, I'll show you that. So I'm going to come in with just gel paint and do my designs and I'll show you what I mean on that. And like I said before, the gel paint sometimes is too thick to be able to really get a good spiral, but the mixture of gel polish and gel paint for me is the trick. Take your time. Sometimes people try to do spirals too fast and the brush doesn't want to cooperate. In fact, it would be kind of fun. I'm going to overlap these. And another thing like I've showed before is with spirals, Sometimes you're not always, or with flares even, sometimes you're not always just moving the brush. You're moving their finger too. And so if you have your brush in a good placement and you're anchored, when you come in to do the spiral, like right now I'm just moving the brush, okay? But what I can do is I'm holding the brush still now and I'm moving the finger around. So you'll need to find what's best for you. I find that naturally because I've been doing this a while. I'm kind of moving both. So much fun. Kind of psychedelic, huh? So if you guys like pulled out your stuff and played more, I think you guys have been amazing at posting pictures of what you've done, like absolutely amazing. It is about time for me to get some certificates rolled out. Okay, so the rest of that's done in white. I'm gonna cure that. Now gel paint needs cured for one minute. It's a lot thicker and the pigment's so much heavier that it, it needs that, that complete cure. I'm going to clean out my bristles again. Yay, back down to my normal. Beautiful brush. Sometimes I do art on these, like this was my white swatch, and you guys saw that I taught you how to do this art, but I decorate up my little swatch things. Okay. So to make those colors even more brighter, now your white is set underneath, you can go into that gel polish again. This is if you wanted to layer it. And then come in on top of that white and it's gonna be a lot more vibrant. There's some neon for you, huh? So fun. Oh, got a little carried away. Get that back off of there.
Once again, I'm still just using the very tip. You know, this feels like it would be a good practice thing for you is once you did get some good spirals on there or maybe on a piece of paper, then follow those spirals. Wow, those are really popping now. <laughs> What we could have done is a white nail with the hollow and then did this. That would be kind of fun too. <laughs> That's wow. It's kind of crazy, huh? My green got a little carried away up here too, so I'm going to wipe some of that off. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. I can only imagine, see the hollow underneath. <laughs> Even though we've covered up a lot of that hollow, it's still definitely going to have an impact when we're done. Very, very fun. Just a spot. So yeah, this is definitely one that takes more time. It's going to be the statement now for sure. I mean, hopefully your client wouldn't want something like this on all 10 or you'd be spending some hours, but um, in a case like this to have a ring finger really designed up and then the rest of them, maybe just the hollow, you know, fade or something would be nice. There. I think I got it covered. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cure that on the light. That is just going to be back to the 30 seconds. Hi, Serena. You have been a rock star in this um, workshop, posting all kinds of fun pictures. I was just saying that, you know, for the people who've done the, the, you've proven with three attempts at three of the different nail arts that you get a certificate and you've earned yours for sure. Yeah, I'm going to top coat that because I want to see, I'm just going to use a no wipe top coat. I want to see that hollow come through. Yep, there it is. I could actually see that, so a really dark nail, like even though these are still neons, a dark, dark nail, like black, put your um, like supernova on it, do white spirals with the neon on top of the white, it would make it pop, like crazy, make it pop. That would be kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna set that in the light. All right, let me clean up this mess. Um, I have one tip here that has one coat of white on it. I'm trying to figure out what I should do on it. Let's do... Let's swap these out. Okay, I'll let that dry. Let me think, what should we do? You know what, I got these new things from Nail Kitty and they're called Poseidon Glass and they're like for jelly nails. 
And even though they're not neon, they're still pretty cool. And I think on white, they might still be pretty bright. So let's play with some of those. Um, okay. I have a purple, an orange, and a red. I think those might be bright enough. There's that one. Yeah, the camera's not showing it. It looks dimensional, but it has the hollow behind it. I could definitely see that on a darker background, how it would make that so much brighter. All right, let's do one more. I'm gonna put a second coat of white on this one. And then while you have me, do you guys have any questions? All right, allow that to level out. And here. A horizontal ombre with gel polish. Like, horizontal? That's vertical, right? <laughs> so this way, ombre with gel polish? Well, I can show you the best way to do that is with additives. So you'll have your, let me grab one. You can, like, and these more sheer ones um, would fade out very nicely too, but depends what colors you're using. All right, so there's the white. So really fast, I want to play with, um, because it has a slight tacky layer to it, I'm gonna show you to ombre it like, I know I've showed it in the other videos with. So I have a whole bunch of neon pigments anyways, but Nail Kami just sent me some more. And in here, I wanna show you this white one. This is solid white. So your baby boomers, you would paint the nail pink, and then we come in and use the white at the tip. I showed, I've showed you um, in many videos how to do opposite, where you paint the nail white and you come in with a slight pink additive and turn it into a baby boomer the opposite way. So for instance, well, I'll use this one, that's the closest one I can Grab. And okay, so I'm going to use a makeup applicator. I get a tiny bit, you don't want too much. And pretend this is the cuticle area where it's going to be pink. Okay, and then you fade it up the nail. And just work it, work it into that. Mm, that's not going to fade as well as I normally like. I have a different pink that I use, but I just grabbed this one because it was the closest. Okay. And I'm going to use a sponge instead. So yeah, ombre is so, so much easier with, um, with pigments. So gel, I think has the perfect color. I always forget the color, um, but so gel has the perfect color for that. Okay, so I have my makeup wedge. Bend it so you don't get a straight line. I'm gonna use the center part of it and come in and then fade that up. And just really pat it in there and there's your ombre fade in there so when you top coat that it will just smooth it out even more okay so that's how I do ombre
or baby boomer, I should say. But you can do that with any color combo. Now, if you're doing it with gel polish, not the baby boomer, let me wipe that off. Oh, that's gonna be stuck in there, huh? And once again, I'm just using alcohol. If I used acetone for this, it's not only gonna break down the enhancement I have on the nail, but it's gonna break down that gel polish. Alcohol will eventually, it takes longer, but with alcohol, I can do that and just remove the old stuff and make this sticky again. Okay, so with gel polish, Okay, so let's, I try to find two colors that would fall on the same line. So for instance, I told you earlier, if you were gonna ombre like a green and an orange, the combo of that is gonna be brown. It's not gonna be pretty. So definitely find two colors that would blend together or kind of in that same family. If not, I would do it more with the powders. So like if you did a yellow to a green, now I've removed the tacky layer on this, so sometimes what I'll do is put base coat on it and leave it wet and then do this, but we're playing, so I'm gonna do this dry and see how it goes. So do halfway up the nail in your yellow. And I'm gonna extend it a little bit further because I want them to blend. And then come with the green. And I'm gonna kind of kiss the two together and then slowly go over it, but don't drag it all the way down because I don't want this yellow, it's gonna contaminate on my brush. I don't wanna drag this yellow all the way through my green. So right now I'm gonna go between the two and work my way up till I can get somewhat of a blend. Okay. Wipe off the excess, blend back down my green. This is where sometimes if you have a, whoops, if you have a base coat underneath, sometimes you'll start seeing them kind of ooze together. Then you can take a fine brush like your eight millimeter and come in and just slowly blend in the other areas. And you'll want to work with your gel polish a little bit thicker so that it will kind of melt together. So you can see that it's taken away my brush strokes. And then I'm going to come down a little bit further, do it again. I've never been like completely satisfied with ever, ever with these being completely perfect. Like with my pigments, I get a lot more to finish the way that I want. So you might want to just be realistic on that as well. Another way is you can like with your sponge. So there's a fade, but you can still see kind of the brush strokes. If I let this settle and let the gel kind of settle together, it will work that out. So sometimes just allowing it to, to do its thing. Sometimes I've seen where people will come in and um, actually I'll show you. I'm going to go ahead and set that. It's pretty much blended. I'm going to set that for 30 seconds. Then what you do is you take like a wedge and put gel polish on it. I'm going to do the yellow. Sometimes I get bubbles when I do this, so I don't always like this route either. <laughs> That's why it's always so frustrating, because we never know what really works. And then we find out that sometimes these people just airbrush it on. Okay, so take your wedge and kind of fold it out like that. Oop, I did that upside down. And then come in and slightly sponge on your color combo. Like I said, I always get bubbles when I do this. Even if I let it settle out for a while, there's always still fine bubbles in the sponge part. And so that's not always my favorite. And the more you sponge it, the more bubbles you get. So I just thought I'd show you, show you that one, but it can work. 
So my favorite is still, here, let me get that off, is still coming in with a pigment and then changing it that way. So here, I'm gonna layer that again. I'm gonna bring out my yellow. I'm gonna drag it down over the green, which that helped fade it a little bit, but then that lightened my green up, you know. Okay, I'm gonna cure that, and then I'm gonna find my green pigment. Actually, I have an open one. I've, if I wet the sponge first, you have water, and even though you get all the water out and stuff like that, it still puts air into into this into it. Um, so yeah, I've not found any luck with even adding water. Um, I know some people said add alcohol instead because then it evaporates out a little bit. I've not found any luck, and so this is my best luck is using additive. So I'm gonna put a little additive onto my sponge, and then work it up over that yellow and then make that fade back in. I still think additives are the best way, unless you have an airbrush, the best way to get a beautiful fade. So there's my take on that. So let's add something to that. So once again, if I add pink on there, I'm going to get brown. So I'm going to have to add something that has a white base to it or go darker. Let's see. Anything else that you guys wanted to know? Yeah, you guys are agreeing. Ombre definitely with pigment is so, so much better. You have to rewatch from the start. Yeah, I did some pretty cool designs at the beginning of this. All right, let's see. I kind of wanted to do yellow down here and green up here and just keep in this theme for, you know, people who just like yellows and greens. And I'm just going to use gel polish for it. Because even though it's going to be lighter, I think it's going to be one of those like cool subtleties. They ask for it with gel polish colors. And you know, it might be one of those things like you can spend your time doing it and maybe like it, it looked fine with the brush you know, in the beginning. It looked fine. But us as nail techs know that it could maybe look better. So with that being said, you can either be honest with the client and just tell them. I can, instead of doing a vertical, it's easier to do, um, yes, horizontal on the nail because then it's easier to take your, your two sides in almost one stroke, blend them together. Um, here, let me see if I can find another tip. I'll show you that. Because it's so much different when you're going the opposite direction. So, you know, maybe ask them if you could change that up a little bit. Um, or... Um, just be honest with them and say I can do that with pigments and it's still using the gel polish base it's still going to be in gel polish and cured with a top coat of gel polish so therefore you know that might make a difference on that alright I'll do another one on here let me finish this one up alright I'm gonna grab my detail brush and I'm just gonna see, like maybe I'll do zebra print just because I, we've done spirals today. So even though this will be light and subtle, I think it will still have like a coolness to it. So I'm doing the yellow on top of the green. No rhyme or reason. I'm 
about here. I'm going to switch and do half of that in the green. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I can start to see the other fade. And you know, and likewise, sometimes we can spend so much time doing a fade, and then depending on what we do for artwork, covers up part of that fade, so then we don't have to worry about it being so perfect. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Kind of crazy cool, huh? All right, I'm gonna carry that one. Okay, so in those same colors that we were just working with, of course I had that on a white base, so I'm gonna put a white base down. And I'm gonna show you the exact same way, but if you just change it either diagonal or straight up and down, and sometimes our clients, like, they just want the fade. They don't care that it's halfway, you know, vertical, horizontal, diagonal, whatever, so, Sometimes just talking to them a little bit more and saying, you know, it really is difficult to do the fade that way. Um, would you be okay with it with diagonal? And sometimes they're just fine with it. They're like, oh yeah, whatever. I just like the colors. So maybe talk to them and talk your way out of that work. <laughs> okay, let's cure that. Yeah, boy, that is bright. Do you imagine like a client doing every nail, like this one yellow green, the next one like, you know, green to blue, and then um, a good combo would be like blue to pink, and pink to orange, and then yellow to to orange, and then all the way back around. That would be kind of fun with the full zebra print. <laughs> Oh, wait. See, I got sidetracked. I don't even need this coat. I'm going to wipe that off. I was just doing over to white so it would show up better. Okay. So I'm going to use the yellow and green again. Because once again, you want to choose colors that when they're mixed together make a, a pretty color. So same thing. Your yellow down one side and overlap the center line just a little bit and then green on the other and this is where you're gonna slightly start overlapping them I wipe off my brush I come back in start on the green again because I want my green to be solid and then come across and start overlapping again that is so much easier. So I prefer to talk them into a different angle. You could add the powder to the zebra. Oh my God, I could. And it's still tacky, but I didn't remove the tacky layer from underneath. So if I added the powder on right now, it's gonna stick to the background color and the zebra print, which would still be fine, but if I just wanted the zebra print to glow, I should have put down a top coat, like a tack free top coat, then did my zebra print, then put in my glow and then top coat it. Mm hmm. I like your thinking. All right, so I still want to play with these Poseidon colors. So, um, I have white on this one though. So let's use the Poseidon for zebra print. Let's try that. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do a second coat of white. I'm going to make the background solid. So 
So these Poseidon colors are sheer. They're made for like jelly nails or you take the sheer over a silver, uh, like a chrome color and you put it up over there and it gives you a liquid chrome. And so it's pretty cool. And what I learned earlier is because they're all sheer, they blend um, very, very nicely and easily. So let's see what they do by themselves over a white. Whoa. Ah. The consistency is definitely different. It's a lot thinner, like it's thinner like jelly. Okay. So over the white, let's see how bright these are. Let's do the zebra print again. Oh wow, that's actually more of a burgundy. That's really pretty though. Okay. Let's go into this purpley color one. Yeah, so the whites making these look more solid than what they really are. But boy, are those pretty. This is definitely not in the neon collection, but it's it'd be beautiful in the fall. And then into this orange. And I'm gonna go back into this red. Wowzers. That's pretty. Actually very much like that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cure that. So once again, I could have like when we were talking with Serena, I could have taken away the tacky off of that white, which I did not, and then put the powders into that and made that glow or add foiling onto the top or something. So, so fun, so fun. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play around a little bit more with those. Those are a whole lot of fun. All right, Serena says, yeah, next time. Exactly, yeah, isn't it so true that when we're playing like this, and I've said this many times, like I'll start a design and then I'm like, okay, I like that, but wait, next time I do this, I'll ombre the background and then do it. Or next time I do this, I'll put a top coat on and then I'll sugar that. Or next time I do this, I'm going to use that gel paint and I'm going to stick foiling on it and make a foil. Like we can always take it to the next level, but learning the basics first obviously is key. So, but that one, that turned out pretty cool too. All right, guys. Well, we went over lots of things today and it's been, oh my God, it's already been an hour. So I'm going to let you go. And, uh, you know, if there's ever a design that you guys want to see, let me know. And, um, you know, I can come up with something. Of course, our theme for this workshop is neon. And so get some neon colors. So if you guys have not invested in additives, there's so many companies that have additives. These ones are nail commies. Um, there's AliExpress. You can get them. It might take you a while to get them. But the AliExpress, SoGel has many nail commies. What are, uh, excuse me, um, additives. Wildflowers has additives. And so additives are definitely worth their investment. However, you don't have to buy every color out there. I would definitely get the white and I would get the one, um, the SoGel one is my favorite one. Um, I think they said maybe 176 is a number. Um, Becky Bunnell would have the exact one. And then I would get like maybe a gold shimmer, silver shimmer, something like that. And then work your way into colors that you think you would use. If not, you might sit on a lot of additive for a while, but anyways. Thanks again, guys, for joining in. Um, it's always fun to go live and be able to, uh, the Poseidons are fabulous. Yes, they are. I'm so impressed, and I just opened them this morning. So um, anyways, I appreciate your time and um, your dedication into this. 
and I can tell you it's time for certificates. So this weekend I will work on that. If your name is different on Facebook than what you want on your certificate, will you message that to me so we could try to save some time of editing later? Because sometimes people have different Facebook names. And so um, anyways, once again, I appreciate your time. Have a great, great day. And uh, have fun with some neons because they're really popular right now, like crazy popular all over the magazines and even in clothes. So it's kind of exciting that our workshop came out at a time it was just a coincidence of what's popular in the industry. So anyways, thank you guys so much.